Here we are with another episode of The High Ground, powered by Premier Companies. Good morning, Sal. Good morning, Ryan. How's it going today? That's just a wonderful day. Uh, Premier Ag. Yes, yeah, sure it is. I knew you were going to say that. So, <laughs> hey, we've got a couple of esteemed guests in the uh, studio with us today. We have a recurring guest, uh, Bill House, with Liquid Fuels and Propane Sales. Howdy, Good morning, ho. Bill. <laughs> Howdy, ho. <laughs> and we have Brian Lonsberry. He is the routing and scheduling coordinator for Propane. 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 So, that's what we're going to talk about today. Because uh, to, to do a little time stamping, we're in early January, and uh, we've been blessed with some pretty good weather. That's not good for our propane department. We understand that. So now you're getting ready to be blessed with good weather because mm-hmm. it appears that we're getting ready to slide off that cliff and go to zeros or negative temperatures and 25 mile an hour winds. You guys love that. <laughs> we love yeah. it. You love that. So. Other people's miseries are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, somebody has to capitalize on yeah. that, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. my gosh. So, yes. so that's what we're going to talk about. But uh, you guys are both aware that you have a question of the day coming. That's how we're going to start it. So as much as I hate to, Bill, I'm going to start with you. You have a tendency to wreck these. so <laughs> I'm a new man. <laughs> oh, yeah, new. Re- still sticking to your resolution, huh? Yes. So, oh, nice. All right. Your question of the day is, what was your first car and what eventually happened to it? My first car was a 1970 Ford LTD two-door gold with a brown vinyl top. It was as long as a Suburban today as a two-door. <laughs> uh, so The doors was as long as the oh, table, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. 700 pound doors. <laughs> it, it was a workout. Uh, I had that car for uh, probably two years. Um, being my first car, did a lot to it. Um, the dash was cracked, so I went in junkyard and got a new dash. And but when I went to trade it in, I realized I didn't switch the VIN number, so they were a little confused. <laughs> Even at that young age, at that young age, I was a little yeah. the VIN numbers. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, we did the upholstery in it. Uh, hey, I loved it. Yeah, my first car, and I was proud of it. It. Uh, Became a little bit uh, rocky as far as putting fuel in it, um, even back then. Yeah. Even though we were talking dollar something gas. Um, so I traded it in and not sure where it, mm. its final resting place came to be. But it may still be on the road. It could be. It could you be. Know, yep. That's, those are real cars back then. Oh, so. man. Yes. Brian, what was your first car? Um, my first car was a 1988 Ford Ranger XLT, um, five speed with the V6. And that's back when they had the all red interior, red dash, red seats, red steering wheel, everything yep. was red. Um, that truck, I had that for a couple years, worked on it about every other weekend. It was a several time hand me down. Um, finally sold that to, uh, a girl I went to college with. It was her husband. He was looking for just a little truck to drive, uh, from little Nashville to Seymour. So sold it off and moved up to something a little bit better. Um, other than that, better, was, that seems odd. Yeah. I don't it, think better. That'd be a stretch probably. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the, the Ranger. It was, it was a good truck for, for a young guy like me. Cause, uh, I wasn't a careful driver. As I should have been. So huh. a little ding and dent didn't matter. We just little little uh, uh, character to it. There you go. Well, yeah. I don't know. I never owned a Ranger, but everybody that I knew tried to kill them. Yeah. They just didn't. They didn't have a lot of success. They were pretty tough. They yeah, were it, pretty tough. We we put it through a lot of stuff, um, and uh, it survived. Was it four wheel drive? Oh yeah, it had the old lock in uh. hubs. It had it had everything you those wanted. Were, those were always convenient. Yep. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Because you don't think about that till you're stuck. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, what about you? <laughs> well, um, yeah, this one goes back a little bit. I talk about our first um, first vehicle and what happened to it. Uh, it was a uh, is not really my first, but it was in is probably a 1977 Trans Am, uh, and it was orange and big block and. I had, uh, I promised, I told dad, I was like, Hey, I'll be careful. I'll be careful. And, and, uh, I won't drive fast. I won't speed. And so I talked him into co-signing for me 
and uh, we got the got the car and i was you know showing it off a little bit and um ended up less than two days i had the vehicle less than 48 hours and i totaled it and we're probably past the statute of limitations but <laughs> i uh, <laughs> racing my buddy coming out of town and uh he's ironically he's actually the sheriff in washington county now so for listeners that live around there they'll know who it is but because he lost <laughs> yes i won <laughs> but but uh had it for less than two days less than 48 hours and totaled it uh that's probably going 70 miles an hour there's a little bit of rain on the on the highway but i don't know if that would have helped anything uh of course has back four seat belts and uh, fortunately for a young kid that didn't have a lot of sense um, not a scratch on me totaled the vehicle busted every window in it and uh, even the steering column was bent up and uh, but uh i went on to wreck other vehicles <laughs> But uh, excellent driver now, so hope that that doesn't reflect on my driving record today. But uh, that was uh, that one didn't last very long. I don't think my mom even got a chance to ride in that vehicle. But that's mine. That is good. That's good information to have, yeah. though, guys. Yeah. When he asks, "Hey, my company truck's in the shop. <laughs> yeah. Could I borrow one?" The answer is no. 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 There no. you go. See. But I'm, I'm an excellent driver now. Excellent right. driver. <laughs> <laughs> if you do say so yourself. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So my first one was a 1976 GMC pickup truck that set in the barn lot for a long time I had stock racks on it for a long time when we hauled hogs yeah. to the back end of it so um I, the day that i took it as my my first vehicle uh, i took it to the car wash and washed almost as much out of the inside of it <laughs> as i did out of the outside of it that's when you used to drag the hose right through the cab right oh yeah vinyl yep vinyl everything yep. vinyl seats vinyl console vinyl floors no power steering no ac man it was fun though I went took put new tires on it, put glass packs on it, and oh, just course. run it. And uh yeah, and it was a it was a seventy six GMC with manual transmission, no power steering, but ordered with factory bucket seats and a console. Mm, wow. So yeah. So you could ride three in the cab, but the guy in the middle, middle yeah, yeah. Real, real rough. Terrible. Terrible <laughs> spot terrible. to Not set. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, terrible spot to set. But I drove that truck for a long time, sold it for three hundred and fifty dollars. And it had 64,000 miles on it when I sold it for $350. Wow. Looking back now, I mean, you wow. could pull the 350 out of it with that many miles on it, probably got 800 out of yeah. it today. So right. I wish I knew where that truck was, but yeah. uh, I doubt I doubt if it's still alive because uh, you really had to rest your, your boots on two pedals to keep them going through the floorboard. By the time I sold it, it was 64,000 miles on it. So <laughs> I doubt, regardless of how many miles they put on it, it's not around at this point in time. There may be parts of it. If but you yeah. get a hole in the floorboard, you just get floor mats. Right. right yeah. mm -hmm. Well, we used to uh, rivet license plates into the floor pretty pretty regular on a lot of those old trucks. So there's like five of us that had 76 GMC pickup trucks for some reason. And uh, uh, they wouldn't have been around today with the way they rusted. But, yeah, so we had this 76 club, and we were cool and amongst ourselves. Yes. That was about it, though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And I had valve cover gaskets that leaked, so if you parked it at Walmart, you could still see. If you didn't shop real long, you could still see where it parked at because it looked like pig pen. It had that blue smoke just sort of hovering around. <laughs> and so, you didn't have to remember what aisle you parked in. So, anyway, that was a, that was a good one. So, All right, well, let's get to the real reason why we're here. It's not necessarily the interview bill, but that's always entertaining. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so we're going to talk about propane, and uh, as the weather slides into uh, some more winter-like conditions, let's talk about propane safety, Bill. Um, I want to kick that one to you first, um, coming from someone who doesn't even like to fill their own grill tanks. Yeah. So let's talk about propane safety for our homeowners, for, for anyone who has propane or maybe thinking about switching to propane. Safe product. Absolutely. Okay. Let's uh, go the f the first route, and th this is the one that really gets we want to jump on real quick. Is if you're smelling propane inside a uh, home or an office building, um, we just some things you want to do right off the bat. First of all, if there's any open flames, candle, cigarette, uh, range, let's turn those off. Don't touch anything else. Don't turn light switches or anything that could spark um it could spark an explosion from there get out of the house um you can go to your tank and um, turn it off it's just mm -hmm. a, a valve and 
turn it clockwise and you can turn off the propane that will be going to it. And from there, get a hold of us, your propane dealer. Um, we will get out there quick and get things figured out. It may end up being something happening with an appliance of yours or whatnot, but we'll figure it out and get the from there they can get the right people there. But we don't want to take any chances if you smell propane. Um, that's you, pretty rare. I mean, that's something that would be unusual. Uh, not as unusual really? as you'd think. Hmm. Yeah, yes. we, we get so what are some of the causes? Uh, like I said, it could be an appliance issue. Um, left on or? Left, yeah, or a leak from at the connection inside. Hmm. Um, for us, we deal with from the tank to the house. Everything inside is not our responsibility, but we... Obviously, we do leak checks and make sure all the propane's going there, you know, properly, and there's no leaks. Uh, just quickly on the safety, every time we um, do a leak test, it's because normally it's because either a customer smells something, which obviously the propane has an additive that gives off that smell, smells like rotten eggs. You can smell that. That is something that we actually, that the providers put into the propane for that safety. But then also, um, anytime there's a new owner at the uh, residence, a new homeowner buys a place, because you don't know if somebody's had a dryer, a stove, if they unhooked it, if they mm. moved it. Um, we find that quite a bit, even on the new appliances. Somebody buys a new stove. Um, happens pretty regularly. You get a stove that something was loose, um, something wasn't installed correctly. Um, and we and we find those. Um, it's just good common practice. So we like to have a leak test on every new homeowner, every new person to that residence. That's a good idea because you're pulling out those uh, fire logs or whatever else. Who knows what got moved out, painted around, pushed back in, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, Bill, we just did a new install, right? Absolutely. On, on my uh, barn dominium. I yes, built sir. one of those mm -hmm. pole barn shop and, and mother-in-law house. So mm -hmm. we got her moved in. and Does she and, have her full accompaniment of Milwaukee tools yet? You no. Know, no. Not yet. But she but needs that them. That is I, a good idea. I think she needs them. She can put them right there along with mine. <laughs> yes. Yes. She probably needs the 12-volt yeah, set. I'd say she, she does. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, but, go ahead. Uh, so um, kind of familiar with this because the bill and the propane uh, department came out and, and set the tank and then – we had two different furnaces. We had one for the shop and one for the home right. that was uh, going in, and they ran different lines and and regulators and mm -hmm. and uh, it, was, it was important that the that the installers of the 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 heating and air company was there with the new equipment and Premier Ag like to have both of them there. That was important so they could kind of work together just to make sure that their equipment was working right. And our propane was all hooked up good. Right. We that's a that's the best case scenario is if we can work with the heating and air people at the same time. Um, they're there. They can check their leaks. We can run our tests. Um, just tends to work out better for everybody if we can make that happen. Doesn't always happen, but mm -hmm. um, when that does, it's best case scenario for us and the homeowner. Um, and we just want to make sure, obviously, that we're doing what we need to do that our we've checked all our, our boxes and you're ready to go. Um, yeah. Cause you just never know. Um, it, it, installing all that pipe inside, there can be, yeah, you know, a, just a small leaks here and there. What, what struck me was how easy the process was. I mean, obviously, all right, we work here, but even if I wasn't, if, if I wasn't part, a premier ag. I made a phone call. Bam! Somebody's out there looking at the site. The tank comes. I mean, it's just like it was easy. Never had to do a thing. Well, and 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 that's that's our responsibility. That's what hopefully sets us apart from the competition. Um, we get out and take thing take care of things as quick as possible, but at the same time, make sure we do a professional job and everybody's happy. It was easy peasy. We want to hear. So what we're talking about uh, leak checks. Don't we do leak checks every time somebody runs out of gas too? Correct. And why yeah. is that? Why is that important? We do that. It's it's per company policy that we do that every time it runs empty. Um, it's a disruption in the line. 
is what they call that. So every time we have to come out because the tank is empty, we have to do the leak check. Uh, we prefer them not to run empty, but we still get people that call or people forget that's on a will call status. Um, also that gives us, you know, if you're on a keep full or on a scheduled route, if your tank's empty, it shouldn't be empty. So that's a red flag. Hmm, Something's right. wrong. Either we've made a mistake somewhere on, on the routing or, um, we had one just a couple, a uh, couple weeks ago, gentlemen, it's never low. Well, we got out there, done the leak check, had a leak. So he was happy that we done it we took care of it and fixed it. So. Good. Okay. All right. Good. I didn't know that. Go ahead. Brian, explain this keep full. What is that? Uh, the keep full, um, I would say the better name for that would be scheduled delivery. All right. Um, the only reason is, um, on, on the keep full, sometimes, uh, the customers get, every time you drive by, they want you to stop and drop 20 gallons. Oh, uh, they, oh, you keep me up. Keep me up. Um, the scheduled delivery is a program that we offer here. Um, we have the gold cap program where we put you on a route based off your, uh, past history and your usage. And we try to fill the tanks between 20 and 30%. It's where that's where it's optimum for us, maximum efficiency. We're delivering the most gallons, and you're not low to where you're in the 5 or 10% range. Um, we really push that because it's a lot easier to work you into the system and on, on that delivery rather than you call in, you're at 5 or 10, and then you're worried yeah. for a week. It's, uh, it's three to five business days when you call in. So if we can put you on, on the scheduled delivery, you don't have to monitor the tank. You don't have to look at it. It's, it's just something that we offer to where it's taken care of. Um, if for some reason, um, and it does happen, um, if you're on scheduled delivery and you was to run empty, a lot of times people used to burn wood and then they stopped. So not using a whole lot of propane that now you're using it wide open, yep. you, you don't know. Or um, people are doing home improvements I've had hey, they've left windows open upstairs in January. It's just odd and in stuff like that. Um, but the good thing about the scheduled delivery program is if you was to run empty, which we don't want, somebody is coming 24-7. We're coming out there at midnight, 1, 2, wow. 3 in the morning. We're going to come out there and take care of it. And that's just a security for the customer to know that we are there to take care and stand behind what we offer. We had like, just last night a uh, driver out at 1230 last night. That's um, so. That's amazing. Yeah, you know, I put a little shout out to him too because we, I've always just had propane in my shop. That's mm -hmm. it. Nothing to my house. And then this summer we put in tankless water heater, and they got us hooked up to the house. And uh, uh, Kevin Crane, who's the service tech over there that takes care of uh, in the area where I live, and he's not the only one, but he's the one that took care of mine specifically. He just sent me a text the other day. He said, "Hey, it's getting pretty cold. Have you checked your, have you checked your LP tank yet?" Because he said. You're you're burning a lot more than you're used to burning. He said oh, you yeah. better make sure you don't run out. Mm -hmm. Which I think I would assume we're doing that for everyone. It's not because I work here. But mm -hmm. uh but you know, that's those are good reminders that just what you're saying, man, I went out there and looked and like I fill up one time a year with mm -hmm. summer fill. That was it for my building. And now I went out there, you know, and looked. I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Those those long showers are burning <laughs> <laughs> <some propane. laughs> it, it it makes a difference. We get um a lot of times you see now is the uh in laws or or the parents, Sal, you know, yep. the mother laws move in and they turn the heat up a little bit. Um here in the past couple of years with the housing boom, you see a lot of home uh, remodels, drywall's a big one. Um, trying to get that stuff to dry down. I mean, they crank it way up. You get that. Um, even on scheduled delivery, when you get out of the normal, your normal cycle, you know, you come home, the heat's at, you know, 65 to 70. But, hey, we're, we're doing something here or we're changing something. It's kind of good, to, even though you're on scheduled delivery, kind of take a look at that because that throws that out of whack. Um, a good example are shops. Shops are the worst to try and keep track of. Because when you open that door, hmm. I don't know if you open it five times or a hundred times that month, and you'd be surprised at how quickly it sucks that heat down. I'm finding that out, Brian. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's I've got those great big doors, and they're electric, and I love using them. But well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, well, for the way you turn the air conditioning on in the wintertime, I'm glad you're burning <laughs> some propane somewhere. Yes. Well, I like freeze death in here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and that, another point, you – the new technology, new appliances, you mentioned you put in a tankless water heater. That pulls a whole lot more BTUs and propane than your standard 
water heater. Oh, good. So good. I was hoping so. We, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's good for us. Yeah, it's great. Uh, I kind of wish I would have known that, Bill, before I put mine in. Did so. I not mention that? No, oh, I think okay. you had a smile on your face yeah. whenever I... No, oh, you'll love this thing. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I do not make commission on gallons, so don't worry about Uh-oh. that. Man. Um, no, but Did we just, pay you? <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's one thing we try to do when we set up a new account or whatnot is go through and try to figure out everything they're going to have on propane, uh, figure out line size and that kind of thing. And like I said, there's, you know, one of the issues we have, uh, you have furnaces now that are kind of dual cycle. They're heat pumps with propane backup. Had a gentleman had the heat pump part go out but didn't really keep up and think about it and he was just running straight propane and he ran out because it's propane's just was supposed to be the backup hmm. so things like that we need to know what uh, our customers have and uh, that, that that is a good example heat pumps in this time uh the past month you know the heat pumps you get down i think it's like 32 33 heat pumps are pretty efficient but once it gets down to like next week you're on, they call it emergency heat, yep. and it's just straight propane. Um, you go from using hardly anything to it's running wide open. Um, that's something, you know, to keep in mind, that's something that we take into account when we put you on the scheduled deliveries. Um, a good way to monitor that sometimes is to put monitors on them. Uh, we do that with a lot of the commercial accounts because the the usage is so irregular. Um you just can't – there's no way to even measure it. Pools, pools are the worst, too. Um, I don't know. Swimming how, pools. How, how, yeah, how long are you going to keep it on? When are you going to turn it on? When are you going to turn the heat on on the pool? You know, is it May? Or some people don't turn it on until, you know, October because they want to stay warmer longer. I mean, and there's just no way. You would think, oh, propane, you're just using that for heat. No, no, the pool sucks that down, and that's just something people – you got to keep that in mind, even if you're on schedule delivery – you're, we're not planning on using a lot. Even pools and shops would tell you to keep an eye on it because uh, pool heaters suck them down pretty quick, and you're like, man, it's July. Yeah, but you're trying to heat that water up. Right. So. Right. So it's not July. It's January. And um, how do you want people to order? You said three to five business days. How do you How do you plan for maybe next week with snow and obviously it's going to be cold. We don't know what the weather is going to do from a precipitation standpoint. So what are, what are your preps? What do you want out of folks whenever they put in orders now? Obviously not wait till the last minute. And what's the expectations and once you get to the house in the wintertime? Um, what we plan on is, is we tell all the customers try to order around 20 to 30%, preferably 30%. If you're a little sooner, 35 or 40, that's fine. Um, and as we are running our scheduled delivery routes, we will just incorporate those in just like another stop to make it efficient for everybody. If we're already going to be in the neighborhood, we'll just come by your house and top you off also. Um, when you wait to the last minute, um, it throws us off the routes, off the scheduled deliveries. So there are more charges incurred with that. Um, and then obviously if you run empty, somebody has got to be home, which makes it, makes it more difficult for the customer because they have to sign the leak check paperwork that we actually done it. And then you're trying to schedule times, you know, I can't be there till three 30, you know, they're working also, not everybody can just leave work. So, well, then you're trying to tailor made that route to where he can run all day and finish up close to that area where he needs to be, which makes it hard though. Sometimes when you're doing, you know, a lot of these guys are doing 25, 30 stops a day. You know, some of them do a little bit more than that. And you figure in every single day that they're doing these, it's a lot of stops coming in and you're trying to tweak it for one person. Um, and we do our best and we try not to take advantage of that. If we're close and we can get you right there, we will. But if we have to stop and run all the way across the County, you know, there is an extra fees incurred with that because we got to stop what we're sure. doing and the driver has to be out later t- to keep going. Mm-hmm. So, and we can't stop. We have to keep going because he's got to get done because they just keep piling up. So, so when you did that, um, so last week, a driver came by and, and topped off my tank mm-hmm. there at the, the, the barn dominium, topped off that tank and topped off dad's, but I didn't do anything special. Is that something for new new tank sets that you just kind of that is that 
No, no. Um, that was Tony Thieneman who came out there. Um, no, I actually take care of the scheduling. Uh, I did for your area. Uh, our new hire does that now. We put you on that route, Good. and then obviously, since we're just up the street, we'll hit them both at the same time. And that's part of being on the scheduled delivery to where we just come in and top it off, and you don't even really have it to take awesome. a look at it. It was awesome. Yeah. It's, so it's really my dad. He's eighty four, and and uh, it's just comforting for him. Mm-hmm. I mean, he just the. Uh, you know, folks just like to know that you all have come through and topped the tank off. and It's something less you have to worry about, especially in this day and age. There's a lot going on. We could take something, ease your mind on this. Um, you know, especially with the holidays, people don't want to have to worry. They just want to know it's going to be on. It's going to be warm. So Yeah, I traipse out behind my shop and check about every three days because I've not figured it out with this <laughs> new new usage yet but uh but i may just call just call my driver and say i don't know what what i need to do to be on that scheduled delivery but just make sure i don't run out yeah so yep. that'd be the main thing what about so. the uh, i got a question about those tank monitors mm-hmm. what what are i mean you said they're going commercial accounts i mean what is those, what are those like and well we uh it's new technology and we're uh doing a test run up north with our customer base up north um, we place a monitor on your tank that will read um, daily. The l- daily reads and let us know the level that you're at. Uh, we receive email uh, back each day from that monitor. So pretty much live, we know where you're at. So in some of these cases where we're talking about the heat pump went out and propane is just wide open, we can see that. Instead of mm. not knowing and mm-hmm. needing the customer to call in, we've got it. And what this will do is when a customer is at 30%, the monitor related that to us, and it'll go into a uh, dispatch route. Um, so what the benefit is, number one, it's the we're – worried about the customer they're getting full advantage of knowing we have around the clock uh, access to your your watch to it all the time yeah to your yeah. tank mm-hmm. um so hopefully that gives them security to know they're not going to have an issue also for us it's um it's should be uh, in the long run um a savings uh in time and like Brian, yeah. Brian was talking about earlier, uh, you know, doing the routes efficiently. Yeah. And that'll become a really big thing for us. And uh, better efficiency means less less expenditure, which means we're better. Yeah, driving better cost off. out. Yeah, yeah. Do you see a time whenever all these tanks have monitors on them? That probably, Someday. yes. Someday? Really? Yeah, it's, it's probably sooner than you think. We're, we're working towards mm-hmm. that. Um, the monitors really allow us to really dial in. Um, if we can cut out 10 or 12 stops and haul just as many gallons, um, you know, you're hauling everybody's at 20%, 30%. Well, that gives us more efficiency. You're cutting down on overtime, the driver, wear and tear on the trucks, the tires, all that stuff. We all know everything's went up. If we can cut down on that – um, that just gives us more efficiency. We're getting more done in less time, like Bill sa- said there. And then also that gives the customer peace of mind, like, hey, mm. this reading is coming every single day. There's no guessing to it. If the monitor doesn't read, I think right now, was there like 500 up there? A 1,000. Well, they're not all on. Oh, we, we bought we bought, we bought a bunch, a yeah. but they're not all on. Okay. But we're doing a test run. It's working really well. Um, we're comparing some of our guys and just noticing, hey, he's delivering um, just the other day. You know, it was 12 less stops, but he's delivering, you know, 1,500 more gallon, and they're not running out. Well, over the long haul, when you figure out how many trucks we got on the road, plus your diesel fuel, plus the driver's time, that's that's delivering you know a quality product at at a reasonable price and that helps us cut down which is beneficial to everybody sure yeah sure it's neat so anything else you want to tell us about winter propane safety our programs you want to sell a little bit I don't, it's up to you guys well you know quite honestly right now we're we're hitting the 
the the Brana winter. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a little tough to get out there and set new tanks right now. Um, give us a call. We'll try to try to work things out. Spring is probably going to be the better way if you can wait. If you can't, we'll get with you and work it out. Um, you know, I think our current price is two twenty six nine mm-hmm. uh, delivered. Um, and if we can be of help, give us a call. Um, anybody here? That's the other thing I'm, I'm, I'm proud of is as you look at the propane industry right now, um, the bigger boys have kind of shut down the local offices. Um, you're, you're calling into a call center somewhere, not in your area. Uh, with us, you're going to get local. You, whoever, whoever you're calling, we're local. We know where you live, you know. We've talked to you before, so that that personalized per, service personal touch is something I think we bring to the table that a lot of companies right now have, have moved away from. I think it's kind of neat. It's yeah. like we're big, but we don't act like it. Right. You know, we still have, uh, you know, there's a lot of us running around with Premier Ag. We may be in different different divisions, or or uh, but they see a lot of representation out there. Mm-hmm. Correct. And so yep. uh, it's kind of neat to be at a ball game or something, and, and somebody asks about, you know, a propane uh, question or, or one of our other divisions. And, and it's kind of neat because you've got representatives out there all over. Correct. And that, yeah. that does make it local. It's funny when you drive around and see how many customers we really have because of those tanks. tanks. Setting out. I yeah. mean, that is, mm-hmm. that's a clue in, I mean, you drive down and buy a cornfield, you don't know maybe sometimes whether it's ours or not, but man, it, it's pretty easy to tell how many customers we have and it's your appreciation for people. And you might see them on the street and you're going, you know, I don't, I don't really know that guy. Well, he's a customer. You know, yeah, that's a, right. there's a real, there's a real high possibility maybe. So, <laughs> right. so, um, anything else? You good? I think I'm good. <clears throat> so you got any more for him? Thanks for all you do. I know I've been using them a lot lately. So yeah, well, batting down the hatches, it's going to get, uh, going to get ugly. So, uh, yeah, I know you guys love it. So, oh yeah. Put smile on our face. (laughs) (laughs) And I will preface that you said a little bit ago, we know where you live. I'm not 100% comfortable with that, Bill, but it's okay. I know you meant it in the best way. So (laughs) (laughs) I know it wasn't a bail threat. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, that's all we've got. Thank you guys for being here. And that's another episode of the High Ground Powered by Premier Companies. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.